views have always been the same about the Blue Zones is, okay, they're people with a sense of purpose. They have a, a strong community and they eat whole foods. Amazing. I believe in that as well. Completely. These are these are huge fact. Oh, and movement. True, right. They're always moving. They're, they're working with their hands. They're climbing up mountains, you know. In nature. In I think nature. that's a big one that they didn't talk oh, about. Oh, for just sure. Just like how uh, ingrained they are in nature on a daily basis. Outside. They're outside walking from place to place. Yes. Of course you're going to do well. This is great. And they're avoiding processed foods. So, of course it's going to do well. It's just that he took this angle as very biased that he saw what he wanted to see and just interviewed specific people that happened to be more plant-based. But, you know, there's people like Mary Reddick that are traveling around the world and I've been with her into some of these blue zones. And she sees the exact opposite. She sees people eating nose to tail. They're eating a, a lamb from nose to tail, right? They're sucking the bones and eating the bits and pieces and the organs and they're eating goat and they're making everything with animal fat. And he doesn't see that. That's actually a good one too is like you don't see the fat. If you're a inexperienced researcher and he's not a researcher at all, he's just some biased guy that had a idea that vegetarian was a good thing to do. And so it's like you, they didn't have throughout history, they didn't have seed oils. They didn't have all this stuff. They just used animal fat, but you can't see that. So you see a plate of food and maybe there were, were not that many animals visible on the plate, but by calories, they were a lot, they were animal based, I think. Like I've been to Costa Rica to some of the blue zone okay. areas and they are animal based by calories. And these people don't have a lot of money. So yeah, I mean, they can't afford a lot of meat, but they raise their own pigs and they butcher the pig and they save all the fat and they cook everything in the fat and they get the milk. They're making the cheese from their, you know, one cow that they have and they're animal based by calories. Yeah. And like the guy in Costa Rica who was like a hundred, he was a, he was literally a rancher or like he was moving cattle. Yeah. So I was like, I think this guy's eating meat. They just like conveniently left that out. And then Okinawa as well, you can look at research. It shows that they eat like obviously a large amount of pork and fish. I mean, any of these islands, Sardinia as well is in the mountains, but it's an island. They're eating a ton of seafood. And I just don't like the whole thing because it's very backwards looking, right? Like even Okinawa now, they're not, they're at average Japan life's lifespan because mm -hmm. it, they've dropped off a cliff the last five years. And these people are 80, 90, 100 years old. They're not, we're not growing up. We're not living in a world that they lived in. The mm -hmm. world that they lived in is gone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. You know, the 1900, the early 1900s, nobody living today, really like 50 and under, grew up in an environment like that. So it's just completely different. You can take some inspiration though, but it's it's a very strange way and I'm definitely not a fan of, of the lifespan metric um, overall, of course. Well, I think it's because there's very few people that eat completely whole food diets and the only ones that do back in the day, kind of when he was kind of citing them, happened to be more plant-based. So, you know, there's never been a population studied that was more animal based that didn't also include tons of processed foods. Does it make you think that, well, I don't know how much you weigh diet compared to like everything else, but to me, the takeaway is that diet is important. And if it's a whole food diet, that's, you know, these, all these people are eating hyper local and seasonal by default, yep. especially, what was it in Greek? They were straight up like disconnected from the rest of the mm -hmm. country until like 20 years ago. That means they literally only grew what they, they only ate what they could grow. Mm -hmm. So that's just hyper locality 101. And yeah, I think that to me is an important takeaway. Yeah. So no matter, so, okay. I've been in this game for 10 years now, full time, six years. Like all I do, like seven days a week is think about this stuff, research this, travel, interview doctors, scientists. The number one thing I found is, well, I think food matters most. But it is the whole foods. It is hyper-local, seasonal, whole foods. Those three things, that's what they do. And that's what all cultures did throughout history. And it, the main conclusion I was going to say is that it actually doesn't matter that much the ratio of plant to animal. That if you're eating local, seasonal, whole foods, you're going to be fine. And humans, and we've studied this too, is that they always exploit as much animal foods as they can from their surroundings. And Weston Price found this, is that the healthier populations had more animal foods mm -hmm. and they always ate to the level that they could get of animal foods, right? So yes, if you're screwed and like you're in an island and you can't get that much, you're eating as much as you can and then you're getting the rest from whole foods and you're okay. Maybe you're not going to thrive, you know, like as much as you could. Like the Maasai, they're eating the most animal foods and they're the tallest, strongest, healthiest people I've ever seen. 
and also just it's in the literature like these guys are their average height is like six two or something then they're big jaws like amazing teeth like just so healthy